Hello, so I'm actually at the Belal, uh, yeah, yeah, Belal Park, it's an island. And this is where the Bella Grand Prix is held for IMSA and IndyCar. So this is one of the tracks where the four GTs never race that because whenever um, this race comes around, the four GT were always in uh, at Le Mans for the test days. It's long, yeah, for yeah for the for the Le Mans test days. So uh, Corvette too is never here, but Corvette has raced here in the past. So yeah, no, that's why I'm not mentioning them, but the four the current four gts that have never raced here um this is actually a nice place because it's a practical place it's an island it's a park a public park that anyone can come to and you can actually see the race the, yeah, the skid marks that teams have left behind and this is actually the pit wall you know uh, you know um, american style pit wall yeah so <laughs> minimalist yet very practical Anyway, so the 4GT program has ended. It started in 2016, and they won Le Mans in 2016, and they went one out of four at Le Mans, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, and only won one, one out of four. So um, not quite what they expected to be, not quite what they expected. Um, I'm sure they expected at least two to three Le Mans wins. I mean, four would have been like a, a unicorn program, you know, but okay, I mean, if they had four, I believe they did the homework to earn four wins. You know, they did the, enough to earn, um, yeah, to have four wins. But it was because of BOP. So they never won a Le Mans championship. I mean, they never won a WC championship. They never won an IMSA championship. Um, they won the Daytona twice, but and they had race wins. But it's not fulfilling if you don't want. They won a championship and don't even come at least two two wins you know if they could have won two Le Mans win that would have been even better but cars that are less developed just like the last gen Aston Martin even the current gen Aston Martin um, the BMW is less developed than they are so than the Ford is so as you see you know you see cars driving down the pit lane so actually well behind the pit lane so that's uh, where actually the team should have so yeah in, anyone can drive here that's that's what's so great about this place you know uh, you can have a, a world-class race here but then it's open to anyway you know to, to yeah to everybody I love it anyways um, so and uh, and that's all because of BOP BOP is why the four never made it you know so you can actually see um, this year when they um when they won they so they won Daytona this year and you can see how far ahead of every other team they were. Corvette was the only team to come close to them and they were lapping the Corvette team. So but then the BOP kicked in <laughs> and that's it. They were just like everybody else. But you can see at the beginning of the season all the development work they did. So if they were allowed to keep all that development work, if they if they didn't get any other, you know, horsepower concessions, any uh, downforce, any uh, you know, um, I mean, they were they, they had a lot taken away from them to make sure they were within the performance window of the other competitors. But at Daytona, you saw how how much better that they were. I'm winning. Wow! So I drive a motorcycle, and uh, it's like 50 degrees outside. So I drive a motorcycle. He's brave. Anyways, um, so now that the program ha program has ended, there's the movie coming out. It comes out in November, so I'm, I'll be sure to watch that. I'm actually going to give a review of that movie. So hopefully, you know, um, hopefully you guys watch it and and then watch my review. See what you think. I know. So in the flyers and the trailers, you can see. Matt Dim is playing uh, Kerry Shelby, and then they also have the other actor portraying Ken Miles. Ken Miles is somewhat of a forgotten legend. He was uh, one of the studs of the folk program in, in the 1940s. Um, he was robbed of Le Mans wins because uh, one of the Le Mans wins, um, his car started on pole, and then his sister car started about um about uh a, yeah a couple of places behind him and he was leading his sister car by over a minute maybe even had even i'm not sure if he had lapped his the other sister car but he was leading by a big margin but he was ordered to slow down so 
the sister car will catch up. So the sister car caught up, and not just the sister car, but even the third place car because they were in line for the podium lockout one, two, and three. But he was ordered to slow down so the other two cars could catch up to him. So when the other two cars caught up to him, uh, they told him that he had to slow down. So they so they told all the two cars that they had to all three cars had to cross the the finish line in lockstep. You know, like it has to be a uh, dead heat where, you know, you couldn't tell who was first. That's how Ford went in it, you know. I mean, if you Henry Ford, I think that was Henry Ford Jr. That's why he wants to go. So the drivers have to do what he says. But for the Le Mans organizers, they realize that, whoa, okay, we have to have a winner. We can't have a race without with a three-way tie. We have to have a winner. So... At that time, they really didn't have, uh, they went by the, I don't think they had a fraction of a section, fractions of seconds, so I assume that's why they did it the way they did it. And they did it this way. Ken Miles' car was starting on pole, so he was, you know, he started further up the grid. The second place car started, I think, two, two or three places behind him. So that means that um, and but they crossed the finish line at the same times at the same time so that means that so the way so they their reasoning was that the second place car actually went a longer distance than Ken Miles's car so the second place car would be declared the winner and Ken Miles was second um, yeah so that's where it went Eventually, Ken Miles died in a testing accident, so he was kind of became, I think, I would say, forgotten by the, um, you know, by the racing community. So, um, so I mean, you have to be a somewhat more uh, a stronger connoisseur about the program to know about Ken Miles. I actually didn't know about Ken Miles until the full program began in 2016. You know, so when I when that program began, that's when I started reading up on the program just to, you know, get to know more mal uh, more knowledge about the 1940s program. I read as much as I could and watched as much as I could on YouTube just to know about, about it, and that's how I found out about him. So, but it's good that they're bringing him back. They make you know he he seems like he's going to be a central figure in the movie. So that's good that they honoring him this way. So, um, yeah, so I kind of like that. But coming back to this BOP thing, so we can see how it can, you know, um, I'm sure if the program, yeah, I'm sure if they had won more Le Mans, let's say Ford had won Le Mans four times, you know, chances are, I will, I'm willing to bet if they had won four straight times, or at least three times, I'm willing to bet they would have to say, hey, let's see how many more wins we can get out of this, out of this car. And they would have kept going. They would not have close shut down the shut down the program but when you win one out of four and you put in the level of resources that they have you know when you put in those level of resources and you win one out of four you don't even win a championship there are lesser cars there are teams putting in less resources you know than you and getting better results uh, that's be frustrating you know i mean this bop thing i kind of you know it kind of uh, it's um, you have to understand why the BOP came about is because of teams like Corvette. Corvette was a big spender and no one could keep up and it drove all the teams out of GT1. But I think you have to blame the regulations at that time. You know, you have to blame the regulations uh, because the GT1 regulations were like pretty much prototype level re uh, yeah, uh, regulations. But Corvette drove everybody out of GT1 and Corvette was the only big guy in GT1 along with Aston Martin but eventually Aston Martin decided to call it quits you know after doing you know so and then they left um, so now they feel that the BOP keeps the level even and well I, I guess it does work because more teams are in GTE now you know GTE actually came from GT2 so there are more teams in GTE and um, it seems like you know it's, it's, it's thriving it is thriving you know, it's definitely more teams than we had in the in IMSA in the past, you know, in the 2000s, you know, in the 2005, 6, and 7. It was just Corvette at the time, so mainly. Um, 
but you know but it's it's, it's just like it's robbing the teams you know the people who do their homework is robbing them of deserved success you know is robbing them of a lot because it puts everybody on an even kill and if you're too successful you get more handicapped just like Ford they were too successful they were the car was just too good yeah and, but um, it's kind of sad that, that that car such a car never really had more success so um, I mean how does a 2008 car beat it um, um, Aston Martin won in 2017, you know, but the car, like Sebastian Bulese, that was actually a 2008 Aston Martin Vantage, you know, the V8 Vantage, so that's what it was. But it was modified to keep up with the regulations, but its underpinnings are from that 2008 year, so. Um, but they won Le Mans in 2017 and beat a modern car. They beat the Ford GT, they beat the Ferrari, they beat Corvette. And those three, uh, you know, they beat Porsche, you know. Um, but you know, but um, but the movie's here, so I believe it was planned. You know, they expected to win Le Mans four times, or maybe close close to four times, and then the movie would come out, and that would have been a big, uh, it would it would have been a big uh, public relations boon for Ford. You know, if um, they had one, they had more Le Mans wins, and then the movie came out, it would have been a big, uh, you know, a big advertisement. Really good for really good for them but 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 the movie should do that the movie should do that but it's just that it doesn't come with the the Le Mans the recent Le Mans wins to back it up so it's kind of bittersweet that uh, it ended up this way um, hopefully they do come back in DPI you know and hopefully the DPI rules align with the WEC's uh, hypercar rules and hopefully we do see them at Le Mans I'd like to see that um, you know so hopefully that does happen but then you know I believe they were planning to be in DPI. They would have done DPI this year and next year just to stay in touch with the regulations, stay in touch with the you know with the development curve. But we'll see, you know. But um, I can't wait to check out the movie, and I hope you do as well. Thank you for watching.